Welcome to Stage Mom Podcast, a podcast for breakthrough bands and artists. Today we have Cassie Ortiz, a pop rock artist out of South Florida. Cassie is a super talented artist that can sing just about anything and make it sound incredible. The talent that Cassie has is not taught, it is only God-given. She has big things coming in her future, including her audition for American Idol. American Idol starts this Sunday, February 27th, so tune in and see if we can catch Cassie on this episode. I can't wait to see what happens at her audition. Okay, so we have Cassie Ortiz here with us today. And I'm so excited to have her. I've been following Cassie for a really long time. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Cassie Ortiz. Um, I'm 21 years old and I'm a singer from the like Fort Lauderdale, South uh, Florida area. Okay. All right. Awesome. So what do you, um, what type of music do you sing? Um, I sing all types of music, but recently uh, my main focus has been more like a pop rock kind of sound. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely sing like a variety of styles, like right. everything. Yeah, you definitely do. Mm -hmm. So what got you into music? Um, I think I've always loved music. Like I've always been mesmerized by it, even as like a young girl. Um, but what really got me into music was I had a 10th birthday party and my dad was like, let's do it at a recording studio. that will be so fun. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, that'll be great. And then I kind of like, I didn't realize that I could actually like have talent or like could sing until I did the birthday party and I sang like a Taylor Swift song and the producers who weren't like real like producers, they were just part of like the package or whatever, but they were like, wow, you have a really great voice. And then I was just kind of like, wait, what? And so from there on, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make this my life goal. Like, this is all mm -hmm. I want to do with my life. This is so fun. And now I know that I'm actually like at least decent at it. So then I started taking vocal lessons and then it kind of just like progressed from there, yeah. honestly. Well, you're definitely more than decent. Definitely. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> that's you. ever heard you, it's like insane. Thank like, you. So, um, so you were 10. So prior to that, you didn't even like sing or have any kind of... I mean, I used to, my grandma used to work at like a middle school in New York and I used to like stand on top of her desk and like sing for her students, mm -hmm. I guess, like happy birthday and stuff like that. <laughs> but other than that, like, I definitely never really even considered that music could be like a career mm -hmm. or something that I could like grow with, right. you know, I just like, it's fun and I like it and people like think I'm cute. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to do it while I'm young. Um, and then it just turned into more, I guess. Right. So, um... When did you start performing live? Like what age did you, you decided at 10 that you wanted to start taking lessons and stuff? Mm. Did you form a band or did you just do like a solo thing or? So I didn't start. So when I was 12 is when I actually started taking it like seriously, seriously. Mm -hmm. I started taking vocal lessons um, like every week, sometimes twice a week. And then I think when I was like 13 is when I like actually performed on the stage for like the first time. Okay. Um, and I did more like solo stuff, literally just like two or three cover songs. Cause mm -hmm. the vocal course that I went to, um, he had like a big group of students who like to do that kind of stuff. So right. we always put on like little shows like right. at like, um, parks or like, just like venues that would have us. Right. Um, and so I just started by doing that. And then eventually, um, I actually didn't start my first band until I was 17 um and that's when i actually got into rock music because before that it was just like pure pop or like okay. r and i did a lot of like singing competitions um and then i realized that like it's so much more fun when you're doing it with other people mm -hmm. and like just making music because i wasn't really like creating my own stuff i was just right. like spitting out other people's like music um and then i realized like writing is so fun mm -hmm. so that's when i kind of got into that and that's where i am now too same thing mm -hmm. like just creating music with other people is really what i want to do right right so, um, just out of curiosity, where did you take your vocal lessons? Um, I used to take vocal lessons at Mike Soper Music. Um, he was up in Wellington, but I think he might have moved to a different area in Florida. I'm not 100% okay. sure. All right. Yeah. I'm just trying to find a good one. Because my nine-year-old, she that's her diehard dream. She wants to be really? a singer. And she really does sing really good, shockingly. like, And she's always sang, kind of like you. Like, it's like a natural thing, yeah. I think. Even though you took lessons, it was probably just to sharpen up what you had for sure, for sure and like she really and she is such an entertainer so it's like it would be a loss to not get her right. into it so. i mean i've been to like multiple voice coaches mm -hmm. like in the area so if if you need any recommendations definitely let me yeah know. yeah definitely 
So what would you say is the most challenging project that you've completed to date? That is a great question. Um, challenging project. I would say the most challenging project for me um, has been the song, the one song that I released with my old band, Low. Okay. I think that that was an extremely challenging project for me just because even though I was saying, like, it's so great creating music with other people, like, it definitely is a challenge. Um, everybody has their own opinions. Yeah. Everybody's very hard-headed. I know that I personally have a very strong personality. Like, I want what I want, and, like, I'm going to do, like, what I need to do to get it. Um, and then... It was just also a little bit rough because um, I was dating the drummer in the band mm -hmm. and then the other two were siblings. So okay. it just kind of like created like a divide around yeah. that time, um, which just made it hard in general. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I don't regret anything. Like it was still a fun experience, but just like having to work through all of that while trying to put out good music that like all of us were okay with and right. that we knew that like the public would enjoy and not to mention like our parents because like I was 17, uh, the guitarist was like 16. Mm -hmm. So like obviously our parents were still involved. So also trying to make them happy. Yeah. It was just like it's a hard. lot. For sure. It's hard. That's the same exact scenario as my kids' band was. Right. Because they were the same age as you guys. Yeah, yeah. And it was a lot of parents involved. Yeah. And it was, it made hard. No, no yeah. offense to the parents. Like, you guys are great. But sometimes yeah. when it's such a creative thing, like, it's just a little bit better to just kind of, like, let the kids, yeah. like, do their thing, figure it out for themselves. Because, first of all, that's how they're going to learn, yeah. you know? And then, second of all, it's just going to make it a lot easier and less mm -hmm. stressful on yeah. you guys and us. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, for it's... Sure. Um, Completely, under, I completely understand where you're yeah. coming from. So, um, what what type of skills have you learned, like um, that have gotten you to be such a good singer? Like, what is it like that you feel is what puts you to that next level? Honestly, my the biggest thing I've learned is to just stop overthinking. Okay. I've learned that there's a lot of things that us as humans are capable of but our brains are just so powerful that it stops us from doing that and like and that even just goes from like being able to hit a high note right. like i know that i have it in me and the only thing that's stopping me from doing it is like being scared of it right so really like that's the only way that i've been able to like build my range you know it's just like going for it and if i mess up i mess up like i'm learning you know yeah um, so just like getting out of my head has to be the biggest thing. Like, even if you don't have like the technical skills, you can still do it. Like right. your body is like capable of doing it. Right. You know? So you just have to like, be like, okay, I can do this and then do it. Right. Um, as far as like you mentioned music, you're writing your own music now. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have any released yet? When are you planning on releasing any or? So I've kind of, so I released one song as a solo artist when I was like, 16 i think mm -hmm. um and then i really haven't been focusing on like a solo career since then because mm -hmm. then i started the band so solo wise i'm not planning on releasing anything anytime soon okay maybe in the future um once the band gets up and running mm -hmm. like i might consider it um but a lot of the stuff that i'm writing right now is for the band really okay. um we've been like writing like crazy so that's really what my main focus is and honestly i'm hoping to put out like a mini like an ep maybe by the beginning of next year okay. is my goal, but okay. we'll see how it goes. We'll right. see how it goes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I know speaking of low, the song with your old band, you mm -hmm. guys won an award for that song, right? Yeah, so did. that must've been so fun to go out and do all that. Um, yeah. was that through the music mafia or no? So that was actually the Josie music Awards. Okay, that's that was, was in, um, Tennessee. That was like a super fun trip. Yeah, that was like, Honestly, one of the craziest, like, most surreal experiences that I've been through just because it was, like, an actual award show. Yeah, it you know, was. Like, we literally had, like, a red carpet, yeah. and I got, like, this really pretty gown, and I got my makeup done. Like, it was, like, I felt like a princess the whole time. And then, obviously, we ended up winning, which right. we, wasn't even on our minds, to be completely right. honest. So, when you went, it was just that you were nominated? You had no idea that you guys were going to win? Yeah, we were just nominated. Oh, yeah, so we were, like, so cool. we might as well, like, take the trip, and, like, you, it'll be fun either way. Could you imagine if you didn't go? I know, exactly, because the, the coolest part about it is that when they announced it, they had our song, like, playing oh. on the thing. So they were like, Exigent, Low, Best so rock, rock Song of the Year, or whatever it was. And then, like, Low just started, like, how did he get so low? And then we were all just, like, we literally sat there for a second. We were like, what? Like, what's going on? Right. And then our parents were like, go, go, go. And we just all started running. Um, so it was just, like, 
really That's just a so crazy exciting. moment. Yeah, and it was super fun just to like share it like yeah. with, with all of us, and and it was at an amusement park too. So oh, it was like, like it was a really fun day. We like got with Dollywood. Ride, like, yeah, it was oh, at Dollywood. Oh, how cool. Yeah, so we got to like we got a free ticket for Dollywood, which was fun. So yeah. definitely like a memorable experience. I was I was so excited to go to Dollywood over the summer, and everybody told I'm a foodie. I love food, and everybody told me about all the great food at Dollywood and everything. So we got there. There was one Seven Eleven sandwich to be found because of COVID. They didn't have enough help to open up all the food places. I was like, of course, the one time I go to Dollywood, I, like, it was awful. COVID just like ruined everything. It did. I'm not surprised, honestly. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Oh my God. <laughs> so what do you feel is like the most valuable and most important bit of advice that another musician gave to you? Hmm. Um... Another musician? Oh gosh, I don't know. I think the most important advice that I've gotten, and this is kind of cliche, mm -hmm. but I used to have this like mentor. Um, his name is Juan, and he kind of like took him, like took me under his wing. Mm -hmm. um, and I joined his like cover band for like a little bit, but it was more just like a learning experience. Right. I was still really young; I was like eighteen or nineteen. Um, and then he just became my mentor, and he just always told me he was just like. Like, it doesn't matter what anybody tells you, like, you have to keep singing. Like, because he does yeah. this as, like, a career. Like, right. he does, like, cover, like, a cover gigs. Like, right. he makes his money off of that. Yeah. And he's like, if you want to do music, like, it really shouldn't matter what kind of music you're doing. As long as you're making music and making yeah. people happy. And no matter what anybody says, just, like, keep doing it. Because eventually, like, you're going to get where you want to be. Right. But you're not going to get there if you just, like, end up quitting or something like that. Yeah. I think that's definitely stuck with me. Yeah. For sure. Like, ups and downs. Always see yeah. it through and just pick yourself up and move yeah, on again. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Um, so what is it that about the music that makes you feel so passionate? Is it like just the message or being able to let yourself go or, I mean, I definitely think that being able to like completely be myself on stage has a mm -hmm. big part of it. Yeah. I think that, I'm like in this really weird in between of like being really shy and also mm -hmm. outgoing. Like I'm really in between. It just depends on the day. It right. depends on the person that I'm around. Um, but when I'm on stage, it's just really nice because I don't have to care about any of that. Right. All I have to care about is doing what I love, having fun and like just sweating. Like right. that's honestly like all that matters. Right. Um, and that's just really like freeing. And it definitely like, it's like, you know how like some people go to the gym to like relieve stress. Yeah. And, like gets their mind off of all the things that they're going through. That's like what performing is for me. Right. Like I don't have to think about a single other thing other than like memorizing my lyrics maybe. And that's yeah. it. Um, which I really love. Another big thing that I love about music, and this is like really random and weird, but I love bass so much. Do like you? the bass just like, like the stand up bass or just the No, just like bass? I oh, mean okay. just like the sound of bass in general, okay. honestly. Like I feel like that's so important to music. And I feel like if I listen to a piece of music without bass, I probably would not enjoy it nearly right. as much. Because I feel like that's, like, what you feel, like, in your yeah. heart, you know? Like, it's yeah. the beat. So that was, like, really random, but I always, like, always No, but it's so way. true because my daughter, she's doing her own little EP right now. Mm -hmm. And to be quite honest, it's a very – do you know Phoebe Bridgers? Yes, yeah. It's very along that line. And now that you say that, I don't know if there's any bass in this whole thing. Like, but I wouldn't know either, like, right. by I mean, listening to maybe it. Maybe she might end up – I mean, I know she's thing. doing the drums on it, but I don't know. I'm going to check with her on that. I mean, I personally, I would say, like, definitely add bass if you can, just because, like, it just adds, like, a whole nother, like, element. She, she might have. I don't have a clue. If she's a musician, which she is, she probably is either going And she's to a drummer. Yeah, so I yeah. feel like she probably will. Yeah. Um, or there is some sort of bass in there. So yeah. I, I think it'll be fine. So um, if you could collaborate with any musician out there, who do you feel would be the best for you to collaborate with? Ooh, uh, if I can collaborate with anybody it'd probably be Haley williams from paramore okay. paramore right. is like one of my top favorite bands it would either be Haley williams or lizzie hale from hailstorm because mm -hmm. those are like my two favorite and i just really like them a lot because they're really like big like female figures yeah. in rock that yep. i look up to right i think it's really like disappointing how little females there are in the mm -hmm. rock scene not even just singers but like instrumentalists as well right um, it's definitely disappointing and I've looked up to them ever since I even started listening to rock. Right. So I think that they would not only, I, not only do I think our voices would mesh really well mm -hmm. and just like our creative like styles. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that they would be able to like give me a lot of like peace of mind and also just like advice as far as like getting into the business as right. a woman, because right. it's so hard these days, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, For you're sure. right. Um, 
that triggered something that I just, I'll remember in a second. Um, how it's going to drive me nuts now. Yeah. I lost it. <laughs> we'll get back to it. So, um, I don't know if I can move on, Cassie. I just don't know if I can move on. No, I know what it was. Okay. So, um, it was either you or your father had posted you covering someone's song and it might've been a Demi Lovato song, but, um, the, um, anyone, is that what it's called? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure it was that one. And we're going to have to look through your Facebook or Insta or whatever. And your father's <laughs> to see, because I posted on it saying like, holy shit, this is like my favorite song that I've ever heard you sing. Like oh. I literally was watching it and my hair was sticking up. I was like, this is even better than oh, the person my that sings it. He's so, so <laughs> good. So you, everybody has to go check her out singing that song. That was, it's like, oh, took my breath oh away. Oh my God. That means so much to me because I remember posting that and thinking like, this is, can I curse? Yeah, I just said, oh, okay, yeah, this is, like, shit, like, this is horrible, I'm, I was only really posting it because my dad was, like, just post it, like, who cares, uh -huh. um, and then I actually ended up getting a lot of good feedback, so yeah. that definitely means a lot, because I was so scared to post it. It was so good, <laughs> so you. good. Thank you. So, you, um, you went and you moved to New York for a while, right? Yes, I So, um, what school did you go to there? I went to AMDA, American okay. Musical and Dramatic Academy. Okay. Okay. And was that for theater, like um, musical theater? Or? Yeah. yeah. So that was like a pure like musical theater school. It's like a conservatory. So mm -hmm. you don't really take like math, English, writing, or right. anything like that. It's literally just like dance, acting, and singing. And okay. That's, and that's it. Okay. Are you planning on going back or you did your, mm -hmm. like, I don't, I didn't go to college, so I don't know how any of this stuff works. <laughs> no, so, <laughs> My poor kids. <laughs> so I actually had like a really rough like schooling experience because I went to Nova for one semester, okay. Nova Southeastern. Um, I didn't really like it. And then I went to New York for a semester and then COVID happened. Uh, so I only went for like half a semester. Oh man. Yeah. So that's why I ended up going back. Cause then I came back home and I was like, okay, I'll just stay home for a while. I went okay. to FAU for a semester, still hated it. I like yeah. school is just not my thing. Yeah. Um, it's not for some people. <laughs> yeah. I just like, I'm just not like a scholar like that. Yeah. Like I don't mm -hmm. like learning about things that I don't really think are going to benefit me, right. especially being a musician. Yeah. So then I ended up going back to New York, um, sometime last year and then and then I came back home. It was supposed to be just for the summer. And then, like, I just decided, like, I love musical theater. It'll always be a huge part of me. But honestly, my passion is just, like, singing and making yeah. music. You yeah. Know? Like, I don't, like, I love being able to play other people on stage. But I want to be myself. Right. You know? And right. I want to, like, put myself out there to everyone. Right. Right. Um, and that's why, like, I just started, like, working, like, really hard ever since I got back home to, like, get my music, like, back up and going. Yeah. Yeah, my, um, I know that when you were trying to put your band together, you'd reach out to see if Kenzie yeah. would want to be the drummer. And she really wanted to, but she was starting this other project that didn't work out, which will take off camera, um, okay. which kind of sucks. So, um, yeah, I wish she would have followed through and been able to do that. With yeah, you. it would have been cool because we had Dylan, you know, Dylan, yeah, Dylan. from Young Fiction. Like my little, my yeah. little kid. He was, he was, he's not in it anymore, unfortunately, oh, just no? because it was only like a distance thing. Yeah. Because our drummer is all the way in Miami and oh. he lives like way up north. Oh, yeah. So it was just like a, dis I literally love the kids to death, yeah. but it just awesome. didn't work out. Um, But it would have been super cool because I know they're like close friends. Super so close, yeah. That would have been like a cute little That would have been, yeah, and it would have been such a cool vibe with I know. everybody. Yeah. Especially because like, I know like Kenzie, like from Saving Harold, which is just weird, but like right. she knows Dylan and I know Dylan. Just yep. like small world. It's so, you know it's, I mean? with as much as three cameras counties here like yeah <laughs> everybody in this industry knows everybody it's, it's, it's just hard not to, it really is it really really is yeah. if you're doing any kind of music and you're really doing it it's hard to not know for sure yeah for sure so um all right so you got that new project going mm -hmm. and you're planning on releasing an ep with them and mm -hmm. you write music for that do you have any shows coming up or anything like that or um so we're doing like a, just a cover gig, um, actually this Friday. Okay. Um, which is not really like I wouldn't say that's like the we want to say that's like the first show of the band, mm -hmm. um, because it's really was just more like a last minute like we'll do it. Mm -hmm. Um, but we are planning to like actually start like because it's just covers, so we want to mm -hmm. start doing like original stuff, like mm -hmm. our actual shows. Hopefully, like by the beginning or mid March is what okay. I'm shooting for. I've been told that I have no patience <laughs> and that that's probably not going to happen, but I'm really like shooting for that because right. it's just been like so long that I've been trying to get this project going that I'm just like, we need to like bang things out and I want to yeah. get out there. Okay? Yeah. Like I yeah. want people to know who we are. Right. Know? Exactly. 
So exactly. we'll see. We'll Drag see your goes. feet too long as you, people exactly. you start to get discouraged. So exactly. I, I like, I can appreciate the fact that you have new <laughs> patients because I don't either. <laughs> So, um, okay. So I heard that you auditioned for American Idol, which is super exciting. Was it the first time you auditioned? Um, I had auditioned when I was like 16, like, okay. it, like one of those, like stand in line kind of thing. You didn't make it past that? Uh, no, I didn't. <gasps> I mean, I was, 16. Shocked. I was I 16. shocked. I feel like they're really like picky about like yeah. the ages. Like you, they're really looking for specific, you know what I mean? Like yeah. if you're going to be a 16 year old, you need to sing like country. They want like a right. 16 year old country pop star or something like that. So, um, yeah. it just didn't work out, but this time, uh, I definitely much better. I haven't watched it since Simon left. But um, I'm definitely going to watch. <laughs> it comes out on the 27th, right? Yes. But yes. we don't know if you're going to be on. Yeah, I haven't gotten. They're going to let me know. They let us know, like, the air dates that okay. we're on. If we're going to be aired. Because not everybody even gets aired. Oh, you better get aired. So um, I haven't heard anything from that yet. And, like, none of my friends have from American Idol either. So we're just kind of waiting to see, like, what the air dates are going to be. I just know that the season premieres on the 27th. Okay. So, That's I mean, I would so still exciting. definitely recommend watching because all the friends that I made in American Idol are literally, like, the most talented people yeah. I've ever met in my life. And they're so nice and they're yeah. so deserving. So definitely watch anyway. But um, hopefully I get aired. We'll see. Yeah, that will be exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it's so exciting. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely going to watch. I'm not going to miss it. And if for some reason you get that notification, let me know. Yeah, for sure. I know, I'll post about it. I absolutely. can't wait. And then, like, if you don't get aired, then... I just, like, am I allowed to know what song you auditioned with, or? Are you yeah, I mean, I think I can that? tell you what song I auditioned with now, um, and I can like spill some beans. Oh, okay. Um, so I auditioned with. So actually, my audition was because the only reason I'm saying it is because I just have a feeling that I'm not going to be aired, and I'm going to tell you why. It's because my audition song was House of the Rising Sun. Oh my god, um, I love that song. Yeah. It's one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, no, and it was honestly like a last-minute change. Like I was not I was supposed to do like an Ariana Grande song, and then literally the day of, I was like, you know what? I don't cuz the producers were just like really wanting me to do that song. And I was like, I'm not feeling it. Like I'm really? like I'm not a rocker chick. Like this is I, interesting. Yeah, I was just like I'm not feeling it. I mean, they don't like force you to, but they like encourage. You know what really? I mean? Really? So, um yeah, so I ended up changing it to House of the Rising Sun. I think it went really well. I was honestly really happy with my performance. And um, I won't say what the judges said, but basically I ended up having to sing another song that oh, was they like... they weren't positive. They, I won't say. It's not that they were positive or negative, but they had me sing another song that was like not prepared at all. They were right. like, we want something like sad. We want something like emotional. You. Yeah, so I ended up picking like a random song like like literally out of my ass yeah because that that's i wasn't what I prepared do. for yeah because you black out probably that's exactly yes. what happened i literally was like <laughs> i can't uh, think of anything can i take a minute like to think like they're just putting me on the spot and like these are like celebrity judges like it's pretty terrifying um and then like i came up with something and so that's like just one reason that i'm not sure if i'll be aired because i don't even know because they have like a list that has to be cleared obviously like they have to get the rights for it mm -hmm. i don't know if my song was on that list gotcha. so that's the only reason why i'm okay. like eh. I don't really know, um, but House of Rising Sun was on the list for sure, so I, I'm hoping that at least they'll air, like, a little part of that. Um, I hope so. And I don't want to tell you, like, what they said, because then you're not going to want to watch it, and that's going to ruin it. <gasps> but, um... Oh, God. But, um, yeah, definitely, it's definitely, I think my audition was a good, like, entertaining audition, because I was, like, literally, like, doe-eyed, like, what is going on right now? Um, but it was super fun. Definitely. Did your experience. father go with you? Yeah, he went with me to the audition. Um, he wasn't like allowed to be in the room or anything because right. I'm over 18. Mm -hmm. Um, but he was like there during like all the filming and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it was definitely really nice to have him because like at that point, like I didn't know anybody, right. you know? And like, yeah. obviously like, like I said, I'm in this between of like being shy and outgoing. So it was kind of hard for me yeah. to like make friends at first. Yeah. Um, so having him there was just like extra comfort. Oh, definitely. And, like, he was, like, crying like a Especially because he's time. so supportive of you. No, yeah, for sure. For you, sure. You could tell, like, he is just, like, yeah. so proud. Sometimes I feel like he, like, wants this for me more than, like, I even want it for myself. Yeah. Not, like, a bad way. It's just, like, he's put so many, like, hours and, like, just uh -huh. time and, like, yeah. money into, like, yeah. my career that has gone nowhere yet. So he's, he wants this for me, you right. know? Um, it's definitely going to pay off. I hope so. I mean, I think, like, some things definitely have paid off. I've definitely come a long way yeah. um, from when I started, for sure. Um, but we'll have to see. You yeah. know, what's meant to be will happen. Yeah, it's true. It's like I said to my daughter, like, even if you don't get anywhere in the music industry, 
think she could look back and be like, yeah, I was like 14 years old playing at bars and going and doing this, like doing an experience that nobody else, like outside the music industry would ever understand. Yeah. They probably look at me as a parent or even your father as a parent. Like they're like, what? You're letting your kid play at a bar. I'm like, (laughs) they're just there for them. They're not drinking, but yeah, Yeah, it's such a good experience. It's so fun. Yeah. It definitely, like, changes, like, a lot of the way that I, like, handle things, I think. Like, Mm -hmm. I think it's just changed me as a person. Right. I think it's, like, matured me, honestly. Right. Like, because even though you're not, like, drinking or whatever, you're still around all those adults. You still, like, see a lot of things. A lot. You know? So, definitely matures you, for sure. Yes. Yeah. That's a solid point there. So, okay. So, I know you said that uh, Paramore is one of your biggest influences. Do you have any other influences that got you interested in doing music or um i mean from a rock side i'd say paramore and hailstorm are definitely my two biggest and then um pop wise i really love ariana grande and demi lovato yeah um just because like i grew up on them you Mm -hmm. know especially demi lovato like on disney channel and stuff yeah um and then ariana grande with victoria's and ariana grande actually went to the same like theater children's Mm -hmm. theater that i went to in boca really yeah so like that definitely like inspired me from that right because you see it happening to somebody in front of your eyes you're like yeah what i can do exactly so that was definitely really cool other than that i mean i have like the classics like whitney houston of course Mm, course. um i really like um andre bocelli that's like one of my 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 pearl jam is like a big one also my husband's favorite all-time favorite yeah that's my dad's like he like wants to get tattoos and like whatever so (laughs) that's like that's like also like what i grew up on just like because that's what my dad listened to Mm -hmm. um so a lot of like the grunge stuff definitely has like inspired me as far as the rock side for sure Mm -hmm. i think that if my dad wasn't into grunge like that i wouldn't have got into rock as much as i am now yeah um because i think i've done i've done like a total like 360 as far as my music side right like in high school i literally was like a pop princess like i could sing like ariana grande all day long and be fine and now like i have tattoos my hair is dyed i have who is that this this is just this is actually a tattoo i got on friday the 13th so it's like a yeah no it's just like a vampire mouth which I got so weird, but, um, like, I like, it's just like, I've changed completely. 360, completely different girl, which I like, honestly. Right, right. Um, you're coming into yourself. That's yeah. I I like to think so. I don't think I would have been like this if my dad wasn't like a huge, like rock guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he likes it. Yeah. I think he's happy. (laughs) Oh, he's definitely proud. I'll tell you that. (laughs) Definitely tell you that. Okay. So as far as the local scene, you were in Exigent. Um, were you in any other bands? No, no. That was like my. I was in there for like two years, two and a half years, maybe. Okay. And you left to go to school, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, but you've also done a lot of like um, solo things. I've seen you perform at different places. Yeah. On your own, what's your favorite place to f- perform? Like, what was your favorite? Um, I mean, right now I've been performing at Tin Roof in Del Rey a lot. Oh, okay. I really like that place because the vibe there is just so great. There's mm-hmm. always a good crowd, like, and it's honestly, like, a fun gig, and they treat us pretty well. Okay. So I definitely, like, that, like, recently that's been, like, my go-to, like, favorite gig. That's where we're playing on Friday. Um, and other than that, I mean, there hasn't really been, like, I mean, I've done some shows for, like, the horse community up in okay. Wellington, um, okay. which has definitely been really fun because they treat me well. Like, right. They, like, feed me. They, right. like, they even give me, like, free clothes, like, wow. for no reason, like, which obviously, like, I'm super grateful for, but I just think that's just, like, more, like, gives you, like, that, like, surreal, like, rock star, like, what the heck is going on right. kind of thing, you know? Um, so that would definitely be one of my favorites for sure. They're super nice, all right. of them. Okay. Definitely. Do you have a favorite local band? I mean, I might be kind of biased. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> But I think my favorite local band is Dirty Rivals. Um, they're like a newer band. And I honestly like regardless of Steven, who is the <laughs> drummer in that band, and my boyfriend, um, I honestly really enjoy their music. Right. Like I genuinely do. I feel like their music is the style that like my band is kind of closest to okay. as far as our original sound. Um and, like, maybe it has to do with the fact that, like, I've listened to all of it before it was even released because of Steven. And that, like, kind of, like, guided me as far mm-hmm. as our original sound. But either way, I just feel like they have, like, the perfect mix of, like, r- hard rock, but also, like, enough that it's, like, mainstream that it can be, like, pushed to, right. like, 
people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and they're also just like really super nice guys. Yeah. Like yeah. the nicest of guys. Right. Um. So yeah, definitely them or AWOL too. I, like AWOL. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like it's not that I'm even saying dirty rivals because I know that AWOL guys are gonna be like, what the heck? Because I, I love them too. Like mm-hmm. I, I literally love them as well. Um, I'm just the only reason is that I'm just not as fond of the like original music, mm-hmm. uh, but more so because they like wrote all most of it like before I was even like involved. You know. Right. So, but yeah, they're both great. Yeah. All the bands here are great, honestly. Yeah. No, they are. They are. There's some that stand out above others, but then yeah, there's yeah. No, I agree with that. So okay, so we're gonna start the you can tell mom anything segment here. Okay. It's not creepy. Okay. <laughs> just questions for people to get to know you as a person. Okay. Okay. So what do you think is your biggest fear? Um, my biggest fear is being alone. Okay. I think, I think that I have like abandonment issues, like low key. Mm-hmm. So I just feel like I never want to be alone. Like I always like want to be like with somebody doing something, right. even if we're just like on our phones, like, right. you know, so like not in the sense of relationship wise, just anytime you just like to be with people. I or... mean, yeah. I mean, I definitely say like relationship wise as well, but I think just in general, like I just don't like being right. alone. Right. I, I don't like it. I don't like I have a lot of anxiety and like being alone with my thoughts just like it yeah. just makes it worse. You know yeah. what I mean? So I'd rather just be like up and like at least talking to somebody. Right. Even if it's on FaceTime. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. It just makes me feel better. Right. And you've been with Steven a long time now, right? Yeah, it's almost been three years. Really? It just seems like so much longer. I don't know why. COVID just time yeah, stopped and for sure. stuck you in and you're yeah, definitely. stuck in your house. It feels like longer too, but yeah, almost yeah. three years in May. But you guys are so cute together. You look absolutely perfect Thank together. Thank you. Yeah, you do. <laughs> a lot of people say we look like siblings, which is weird. It's, but it's the just hair. because of the curly hair. That's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think is your spirit animal? Ooh. Um, my spirit animal is probably a wolf. Oh. Um, I have always liked dogs in general, but like wolves are just like fierce and like they don't care. Right. Um, and like, maybe that's not me exactly right now, but that's definitely like what I want to be. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to say that's my spirit animal and like, that's my goal. Right. For sure. Okay. And they're also so cute. So how they are, be? they are cute. <laughs> they are really cute. <laughs> All right. So, well, in these songs that you've written that have not been released yet, did you write any of them about any significant others or anything about any relationships? And do they know if, it, if they are written about that? So, like I said earlier, the songs I've been writing are, like, for the band. So all of those songs are definitely about one specific person. I will say they are about Steven, okay. and he knows. He hasn't heard any of the songs because, I'm going to be honest, not all of them are maybe particularly positive towards him. Oh, um, but not, like, in a bad way, just more, like, because we've gone, like, being together for almost three years, we've gone through a lot of yeah, things Yeah, and together. you moved away. And I moved away, yeah. yeah. So, so like, we've been together for almost three years, but, like, when I moved away, we broke up. So, like, oh, technically. I that. Yeah, I mean, we tried long distance. Right. It just, like, was really, really hard, especially because I was so, I was, like, doing a really intensive program, so I didn't yeah. really even have time to, like, talk to anybody, right, you know? Right, right. Um, so, yeah, definitely most of the songs are about him, if not all of them. Um and they just like kind of reflect like the experience that i've had in our right. relationship good or bad right and i don't think there's an issue with that because i feel like we both know what went wrong for yep. those times you mm-hmm. know and there's no reason why like putting it out there should be a bad thing when other people can relate to right. it. right you know exactly so i definitely like put it all out there to him like he knows like i wanted to be honest about it because the last thing i want is to release a song that's maybe like and then he's blindsided shit or whatever. yeah yeah and then he's like what the heck i thought <laughs> you loved me so <laughs> So it should, it should be fine. <laughs> okay. Well, I can't wait to hear them. I'm excited to put them out, honestly. Yeah. I think, like, this, I've never written more in my life in the past, like, couple months since I put this project together. Yeah. And um, I've just been extra exp- inspired. And so I'm really excited for people to hear because I think yeah. it's, like, a totally different side of me that people haven't seen before. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm excited about that. So, okay. So who is your celebrity crush? Hmm. Oh my god, that's like a hard question. <laughs> um, my celebrity crush. I, there's so many. Like, there's so many good ones. Oh, you know what? I really like Timothy Chalamet. Oh, I think every girl likes Timothy yeah. Chalamet. Or um, 
Which is funny because if Timothy Chalamet was just a normal guy in your history class, he'd be the biggest dork. No, that's true. He well, like, he makes it work. Yeah. Like, that's what's so good about it. Or what's... Um, and Jack Ansar, whatever his name is, the singer of the Bleachers, you know that guy was in band camp. We all know yeah, this. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, he's wanted by all these girls now. I'm like, the greatest thing in his life has happened. <laughs> it's amazing. It's because, like, once they like, people just see, like... I feel like because even though they do that when they're younger or whatever, like... They're, they become a completely different person once yeah. they're, like, on stage or, mm -hmm. like, in front of the camera. And that's what and, makes it, like, yeah. so attractive. I got to say, he kind of, like, I'm kind of attracted to him, too, because it just his whole stage presence and everything. Yeah. I mean, dork look, everything. I mean, it's just like, wow. I mean, some girls that's like cool. the dorky guys. They I just don't want to admit it. Like, I, I, I feel like I'm totally not saying that Steven's a dork. <laughs> but I definitely feel like um, I've, like, always kind of been more attracted to, like, dorky guys than, mm -hmm. like, big, like, jock guys or yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and what's that guy? That, that I'm like sounding so stupid because I can't remember his name. I'm horrible with names. So the guy who plays Spider Man, like literally oh, the most popular yeah, the, guy yes, right now. Yes, yeah, the one that's dating um, Zendaya. Zendaya. Yes, yeah. I literally. Yeah, he's cutie. I cannot remember his name, and it's frustrating me. But all right. you all know who I'm We're talking gonna, about. Yeah. I'm gonna find out because uh, I, I've been. Oh, there. Tom Holland. Tom, yeah, Tom that's Holland. Nice, yeah. Yes, he's yep. definitely like number one. Yeah, he's, he's cute. And he's also like same thing, dorky as heck. But yes, he he's yep. making it work. It's funny how that happens. I know. It's crazy. That's why I tell my nine year old, you know, don't even worry. They're all the they're all gonna be one one day. Yeah. So yeah. like yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy. So okay, so what life lesson do you think you learned the hard way? I think um I the life lesson I've learned like the hard way is probably like trusting other people mm -hmm. um and when i say that i mean more like i don't really have too many like friends or relationships that really like betrayed me or done anything bad to me i've honestly been really lucky in all the relationships that i've been that i've been treated really well but i mean more like my mother so like i don't have a great relationship with my mother she's just never been around but like as a kid like growing up like obviously like i still want her to be in my life yeah. and i like would always like think like okay she's changed when she says she's gonna pick me up to take me to the movies mm -hmm. like all right like we're gonna go yeah. and then she doesn't come and the thing is like it took me a really long time to like learn that lesson because it would just keep happening over and over yeah. again and then at some point like i just had to be like okay like cut the crap like i'm not gonna like keep giving you like the time of day when you're not you know reciprocating it yeah. back to me she so deserve it. exactly so that was definitely like a really hard life lesson because i feel like i learned that like maybe when i was like a little mm -hmm. bit younger maybe like 14 or 15 so i was still kind of like you know young and like sensitive about that kind of stuff obviously like now like it doesn't really affect me i've just learned to like to yeah. do like it is what it is mm -hmm. there's nothing i can do yeah so i'm not gonna like cry about it or like be whiny but back help. then like a young girl in her early teens obviously wants her mom so you probably were just holding out hope that exactly this time's different exactly for sure that's exactly what it was and then um that like obviously really hurt me when because my dad would tell me every time he's like i don't know why you keep doing this to yourself because mm -hmm. we, we already know and then eventually like i just had to listen to him and just be like you know what you're right it's just it's just gonna keep hurting me so i might as well just let yeah. the big hurt happen now mm -hmm. that i know that it's not gonna happen again yeah so. it's her loss though I mean, 100 percent. I us. agree. I mean, you but you hope they wake up one day and they realize, like, wow, what the hell did I do? Yes, yeah. and they hurt. Yeah, but. it's so funny because like it's only whenever like I have something big going on that she wants to reach out. Like mm -hmm. when I'm auditioning for American Idol, of course. So like, but, like she doesn't really like. I mean, once in like a blue moon, she'll text me and just be like, "What are you doing?" And I'll be like, "I'm doing this," and then she won't say anything else. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's for no reason. So then but when I auditioned for American Idol, she definitely was like, what? You didn't tell me? Why didn't you tell me? I'm like, what do you mean? Why didn't I tell you? When do I tell you anything right. like that, you know? Um, but I've just, like, gotten used to it. So it doesn't even affect mm -hmm. me anymore at this point, you know? Yeah, that's sad, though. Sad that you have to adjust yeah. your life to get used to it. It's okay, because I think it'll, it's made me a stronger person, mm -hmm. and I think it'll make me, like, a great mom, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, and it probably made you appreciate your father a lot more. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Me and my dad. Are, he's like, a great best father. Friends. Like you can just tell by the way that he is with you that yeah. he's absolutely fantastic. For sure. Yeah. Very lucky to have him. So, okay, so what do you feel is your greatest weakness? Um Oh. Um, I think that my one of my greatest weaknesses is probably being honest. Mm -hmm. Um and I Honestly, like, it's kind of hard for me to admit that because I don't, obviously nobody wants to admit that they, like, lie a lot, even though everybody does it at uh -huh. some point or another. But I think that, like, 
seeing honestly like i i'm not trying to blame it on my mom but i just feel like seeing my mom do it like non-stop mm-hmm. um kind of just like implemented that into me into my mind that like it was okay and i've like been work and it's not like i'm a pathological liar like it's not it but i've just like i've had this mindset for the longest time it's like what what they don't know like won't hurt them you right know? when right. when and i've learned like honestly through my relationship with steven that like it's so much better to just like get it out there mm-hmm. uh because otherwise like they're just going to be more hurt if they find out later. Right. So it's like, sit, honestly, like since I started dating Steven, like that's mm-hmm. when I really started like realizing and like doing better because like now it's not just me, like it's also him, right, you know, right, in right. his life. Yep. Um, so like, there's nothing more important than honesty in a yeah. relationship. And I, yep. and the happen. truth always comes out anyhow. Exactly. Nothing stays hidden. Exactly. So, um, that would say, I say that's my biggest weakness, but I've definitely been like working on it. I, I, I think I've gotten like a lot better, I guess at it. Mm hmm. Which is, just sounds weird if it's like, how hard is it to tell the truth? But, you, but, but some and not everybody that, knows, like, the situation that yeah, you're in. Yeah, there are some situations that, like, I've been in that have definitely been, like, a mind, like, twist. Just, mm-hmm. like, having to, you know, deal with the consequences, even though, like, I was the one that made the decision. Um, you know, it's still really hard, yeah. especially, like, being young, you know. Yeah. So, definitely, definitely learned a lot from Yeah. That. Yeah, no, it's, it, and and the fact that you can admit it shows like, exactly what type, type of person you are. Exactly, because like I said, like I've just learned a lot, like within especially the past year, like just as far as that. So like, there's no reason, like I, I'm not trying to hide it, you know. Mm-hmm. Like it is what it is, but I've learned from it, so right. that's what really is important. Right. Obviously. Yeah, no, it is. So okay, so do you have any other hobbies or interests outside of music? Honestly, not really. Music definitely takes up majority of my time and like my interest. Um, I used to be really into like makeup, like okay. like I I would like to like do other people's makeup for like prom and stuff like that. But then when I moved to New York, actually, is when like I kind of got out of it because I just didn't have the time. Right. I, I never even did my makeup, let right. alone like trying to do other people's <laughs> makeup. So like I just kind of like dropped that. But I'm honestly trying to like get back into it mm-hmm. uh, because I I definitely really enjoy it. Um, and then I guess like another thing, which is more like a business thing, but I really like marketing. Okay. Um, I'm planning to go to FAU for marketing okay. that in the summer. Um, just because I really like the like technical side of mm-hmm. like, um, promotions, okay. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think that that would really help for the band too. So yeah. hundred percent. It, it definitely like, that's obviously what sparked my interest in right. the first place. Right. Just like learning like the algorithms, like with TikTok and social media, all that. It's really interesting to me. So right. I kind of want to like keep pursuing that and yeah. like, learning about it outside of music. I can't understand. I, I don't even know how to do TikTok. It's, it's definitely so a lot. <laughs> like it's a lot to think about. But then once you, like, just read through and, like, kind of get a better understanding, then it's, like, kind of, like, it just happens yeah. like this. Like, you don't ha- you have, like, a set plan, and then you just stick to the plan, and then you're good. Mm-hmm. And that's how so many people make their money, you know? Like, they learn, they learn about the algorithm, and then they either, A, do it themselves to, like, make money on TikTok, or they sell, like, a plan, you know, right. for other creators to follow because they know how it works. Right. So um, that would definitely be something cool if music didn't work out, right. honestly. That's yeah. my backup plan, I guess. I had a girl on here that she was founded on TikTok. Like, that's how she got her manager. Oh, really? Yeah. I was like, I wouldn't even in a million years ever, like, I don't even know how to do TikTok, but I wouldn't even know how to, like, look for people like that. Like, yeah. it's crazy. I had no idea that people were getting found. I'm just so old. I no, think. yeah. TikTok is, like, literally huge. Like, people are blowing up. It's crazy. Like, you, your whole life can change, like, just from using TikTok. Exactly. Like, not, not even joking. I think, like, um... Courtney Kardashian's best friend is like a TikTok star. Addison Ray. Addison Ray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's like one of the she's like the top, she's one of the she's like the second most popular TikToker. Yeah. Yeah, it is it's that's just like today's day and age, it's honestly. Insane. Like all you need is social media. Yeah. And like it's a true. phone. It's like true. you don't need anything else and you could be like like a freaking pop star. Yeah. You, for real <laughs> it's crazy it's like a little bit unfair uh-huh. just because like some of the people that make it on there are just mm-hmm. not even talented yeah no, but at the same true. time like you can't even be mad because honestly like you could be doing the same thing yeah like you know this what i true. mean because yeah. like just like tip if you post three times a day every day for a month you're gonna gain like ten thousand followers at least okay that's tip? just the way this is a new one what is tip tip no 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 no, no. like a tip like this, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> so old. No, no, no. Like a tip for TikTok. Okay, 
I don't know what that is. <laughs> just because I don't know. I, you know, my extent to TikTok is going through Instagram and seeing a video, and then I click on it, and then I go up to the next one. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah so. Oh, my God. No, you have to get on it, though, because it's, it's, it's like, life-changing. Not, like, as far as, like, personally, but, like, this is the new world. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? This mm-hmm. is the This is the new wave, so... At some point, everybody's going to have to, like, hop on board. Otherwise, they're just going to be, like, left behind. Lost. Dust, like me. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, lucky for you, like, you're not trying to, like, put yourself out there like that. Or uh, unless for the podcast. Yeah. This would be, actually, that would be really yeah, good. Yeah. I have to get a TikTok account. Honestly, yeah. Mackenzie, Shit. she'll totally help you. All right. She's going to have to I'll give help you, a you. And send me a text anytime. Like I don't know how marketing, to do so I'll TikTok. Help you. Okay. All right. So TikTok now. All right. <laughs> Definitely. 100%. Oh, God. Stage mom's going to be blowing up TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> my sisters are going to be like him so come on seriously <laughs> and then they're going to be jealous when you have tons of followers yes so. they will they definitely will Cassie. <laughs> thank you okay so we're going to do rapid fire okay nobody ever does it right okay ever it's supposed to be answered like this oh god all right so let's see you ready i'll try my best okay what was your first job uh, just get out the pizza place pizza kitchen pizza kitchen yes yeah. I mean, it wasn't called Peach Kitchen. It was just a pizza, like, kitchen. I don't remember, I don't remember what it was called. The name? No? I don't remember what it was called, but it was, like, a pizza place. Okay. Where did you grow up? Um, Hollywood, Florida. Okay. All right. What is the best non-curse word used as an insult? Non-curse word? <laughs> I know. I have no idea. I don't even... Butthead? Yeah, see? Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Would you date a fan? Yes. Okay. What is your biggest pet peeve? People chewing with their mouth open. Oh my god, I hate that. And when they bite the fork. Oh. Or ooh. slurp their ooh, soda. Yeah, no. And who slurps their soda knows who I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it may or may not be my husband. <laughs> what is your favorite age so far? Uh twenty one. Okay, for sure. Have you ever gone viral online? Uh, I have like a couple videos that have gone like that have done decently well. I would say. Yep. Okay. That, like on TikTok. But other than that, maybe I, I'll find them one day. <laughs> yeah, I, they've done. Like, I wouldn't say viral. I don't know what would even qualify as viral, but I would say that like they definitely like gained me a lot of followers right. for sure. So. Okay. Finish the phrase. The way to my heart is macaroni and cheese. Oh Lord, <laughs> Velveeta or Kraft? Kraft. Oh yes, but also oh. I heart mac and cheese is really the way. I never had that one. Oh my God, I'm gonna put you on. All of you guys listening, <laughs> you need to go to I heart mac and cheese. There was one in Davy, but they closed down. But there's one in Boca. Oh, it's an actual restaurant. No, it's like a, yeah, it's a restaurant. Oh. Yeah, and it's like build your own mac. It's like a Chipotle but mac and cheese. Like you can put, Ooh, and they the have fuck? they have grilled cheese with mac and cheese in it, which is literally like the love of my life. Oh my god! So like you need to go there. I love. I'm gonna have to try that. Yeah, no, you have I'm to definitely go. gonna have to try that. That's like that one place on Wilton Manor's Drive. Um, it's like they make all their sandwiches with the waffles. What is the name of that place? It is so good. Oh, are you talking about New York grilled cheese? Yes. Yeah, that place is good too. So good. That place is really good. Yeah. Okay. So, do you believe in soulmates? Yes. Who is the most overrated musician? Cardi B. Okay. No talent. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I have Just absolutely no, <laughs> no objection. <laughs> um, if you could live anywhere, where would it be? Uh, yeah, New York. New York? Yeah. yeah. That's what my daughter says, too. What is your favorite show? Vampire Diaries, for sure. Oh, I've, I've never watched, seen that one. Oh, my God. I've watched it, like, 15 times. Really? Yeah. It's so bad. Like, that I've watched it, but it's a really good show. Right. Like, all-time favorite. Yeah. I can only watch one show at a time, and, um, or I get the, the characters confused. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. Once we had COVID in July... And we started catching up on Love Island. Oh. And so then we threw into the mix Love Island UK. And I was just like, all right, we can't do this. Like, I, I'm waiting for, like, the one girl to come out. She's not even on the damn show. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't do this anymore. 
Or like with Yellowstone, my husband forever kept trying to get me to watch Yellowstone, but I was still watching a different Love Island UK because we decided we were going to pick up on season six, <laughs> which is very good. Um, and I was like, I have one show right now. He's like, but come on, you're always watching that Love Island with Mackenzie. It's got 50 episodes, which it does. Oh, wow. Insane. And I'm like, I know, but when it's done, then maybe. And he kept forcing it on me. It was causing arguments. I was like, I don't even want to watch the show. Like, stop bothering me. <laughs> so then I finally finished Love Island and then I got on the Yellowstone and I am so addicted to it, but my husband doesn't know that I really like it. I'm really playing it chill. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, he's all right. Like, you know. Well, why didn't you watch it in the yeah, first place yeah. when I asked you to? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, my God. So it's so funny. So he doesn't <laughs> watch these, so he has no idea what I'm saying right now. Oh, so. Okay. You can just talk whatever you want. Yep. So, okay. So that's pretty much it now okay. as far as future goals. Um, you've got the EP that you're doing with your new project. Mm -hmm. um, and you, well, by the time this air, no, wait, no, Friday night. Friday night, you're playing a gig. This Friday. Okay. All right. So this Friday night, um, yeah, it'll air by then. So it's at Tinder. This Roof. Friday? Yeah. You're going to be, um, wait, I thought Super what is Gold the date? Friday. No, but the Super Bowl was last Super Super Gold. Oh, Super Bowl is Friday. Yeah. It's next Friday. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, yes. I'm a week ahead of myself. Yeah. 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 yeah so, all right. So we'll miss the gig. At That's okay. Roof, but... It's not an important one. Okay. <laughs> the important thing though, is to tune into American Idol on the 27th. Yes. Hopefully we'll see her air that night. Hopefully. I honestly doubt it's going to be the first night, if anything. Yeah. But we can cross our fingers and hope. Hopefully yeah. it's at least at some point. That's all I care about. Honestly. I think it will be because it sounds like what they did was tortured you and they like to show that kind of stuff to the world. That's true. That's, yeah. that's why I'm saying like, it would be an interesting, like an interesting one to yeah. watch for sure. Like I almost like shit my pants. Like I I'm so scared. <laughs> I would have just blacked out. I wouldn't know what to say at no, all. Literally. That's what happened to me. Like I barely even remember like what they said to me and what I said back to them. Mm -hmm. Cause I literally just blacked out. Right. Like, it was insane. But either way, just watch on the 27th. Um, either way, there'll be super talented people. Mm -hmm. And then whenever I do find out if or when I'm going to be aired, I'll definitely make sure to post about it on yep. my Instagram for sure. So you Which is what? Know. Where they can find you? My Instagram is at Cassie Ortiz Music. And, and you have TikTok? Yeah. All my social media is at Cassie Ortiz Music. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And once I find out how to use TikTok, I'll follow. <laughs> you follow on yes. TikTok too? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So anything else you want to let everybody know or anything? Um, no, not really. Thank you so much for having no, me. No, thank you. I'm so excited and I'm... I cannot wait to see you on American Idol. They oh. better air it. As soon as I saw you post that, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to watch American Idol again. <laughs> I'm going to have to look because I'm not really like, I don't think the judges are going to watch, but I don't really like yeah. the judges they have on right now. So the, like I said, last time I watched was Simon Cowell. Yeah. And... The judges are definitely a little weird. I don't know. I wouldn't say like I necessarily love all the judges either. Mm -hmm. Lionel Richie though has my heart forever. Does he? Oh, okay, good. But the other two can like go somewhere else. I don't know. Like they're well, going I mean, to Luke's gonna be stuck in the cosmetics. All right, I've just gotta stop. Yeah, gotta yeah. Stop. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Thank you so much for having me. No, thank you. <laughs> I uh, it was all my pleasure. Yep. <laughs>